Hi, here's a video tutorial for the calculation of shear reinforcement in reinforced concrete beam. Uh, I'm making use of um, a, a design that's shown on other video tutorials. Uh, there's the first tutorial uh, describes how the main reinforcement is calculated, the main bending reinforcement. In the second tutorial, we consider the minimum shear reinforcement for a reinforced concrete beam and in this third tutorial we'll actually design some uh, shear reinforcement on the assumption that uh, the beam has to carry a slightly larger load than that shown on the previous two tutorials. Because of this slightly larger load, 100 as opposed to 91.2 over the 7 meter span, the, uh, the lever arm in the beam changes slightly, it is now 524 millimeters. Uh, the overall depth remains the same, the width remains the same, and the effective depth remains the same. I'm still going to stick with H12 legs at, uh, in pairs, so two legs of H12, that's the reinforcement that I'm aiming to provide in the beam. I'm considering, although it's a T-section, I'm assuming that it's simply, uh, for the purpose of the design, I'm treating it as a um, rectangular section. Right. What's the first thing we need to do in order to um, carry out our design? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to work out what the reaction is at, the, um, at each of the supports. And the reaction is simply uh, the UDL times the span divided by 2. So I can calculate what the reaction is. So R equals, what does it equal? 350 kilonewtons, right, 350 kilonewtons. However, um, that may not be, or is, will not be, uh, the shear force that we're going to design the beam for. What I want to do now is I want to work out V, E, D, min. So in the previous tutorial, we looked at uh, the ways in which the uh, beam would behave at the end uh, when the um, UDL is applied and how cracks may appear in different places. Uh, I suggest you look at the other tutorial if this isn't making sense to you. But the Eurocode says that to calculate the minimum possible shear force that you want to design for, you're allowed to consider the shear at a distance 2.5z from the face of the support. That means that VED min, that's the minimum shear I'm going to design for ever, is going to be calculated as the reaction at the end reduced by the UDL acting over this length. Well, what's this length? This length is the width of the support, which in our case is 400 mil, divided by 2. So this length here is 400 mil divided by 2, 0.4 divided by 2, and this length here is 2.5 times Z. Well, Z on this occasion is 524 mil. As we presented that right at the start, uh, Z is 524 mil. So 2.5 times Z is this length. So the total length is this, this part here of the equation. Multiply that by the UDL and then subtract it from uh, the reaction and that gives me VED min. That's the minimum possible shear force that we could ever design this beam for. But what we need to do now is check that if we were to put into this beam the um, minimum amount of reinforcement as required by Eurocode, its strength would be uh, 0.15 dB times the square root of FCK. So 0.15 d, that's the effective depth, b, the width of the section, times the square root of fck. So when I work that through, I can divide it by 1,000 to make sure that the units are correct. All these units would give me an answer in newtons, so I divide it by 1,000 to get it into kilonewtons. I see that my shear resistance is 188. My minimum shear that I could ever design for is 199. Therefore, I can't make use of the minimum shear reinforcement in accordance with the Eurocode. 
that's that's fine that suits my example well uh, you might groan if you came across that in the design office because it means that you have to embark on quite a lengthy calc the first part of this calculation is to work out what's the maximum possible shear force this beam could ever take well the maximum shear force it could ever take would be v e d max and that would be sufficient to create a vertical crack right at the face of the support so what is VED max? Well, it's the entire, it's the reaction reduced by this tiny little bit of UDL which acts on top of the support which wouldn't contribute to a shear force at this position. VED max therefore 350, that's the reaction, minus 0.4 divided by 2 times the UDL 100, give me 330 kN. That's good. Why do I want that? because I want to plug it into this superb equation which gives me the angle of the strut action in the concrete. This is a great equation. It really tests your ability to use your calculator. A half of sine to the minus one, 5.56 VED max. We just calculated that, 330. BD, the width of the section, effective depth of the section, 1 minus FCK over 2, 250, 1 minus FCK is 32 divided by 250 times FCK. Keep the brackets around this lot before you hit the sign to the minus 1 button on your calculator. And for us, that gives us a value of theta is 8.86. Uh, degrees. Well that's an incredibly shallow angle, that means that my theta is actually running and any cracks would be heading towards the centre of the beam. And the Eurocoach says no, whatever whatever you do, just assume that the, that the worst case uh, cracking can never be particularly shallow. It can only ever extend to 2.5 Z across the width of your beam. Right, and um, it also says that you have to do um, a, a quick check. It says that not only in your calcs must you assume that theta is such that limits the cracking to this point here, it also says that you can't have cracks greater than 45 degrees. It doesn't just say that it's, so I can't, I'm not allowed to have any cracking in this zone here and I'm not allowed to have any cracking beyond that. So all my all my designs lie within this area here. Uh, the Eurocode um, deals with this by saying that the cot of this angle theta, um, the cot of the angle theta must be uh, greater than one. If it's less than one, it means that the cracking is in this zone here. And that means that the shear force is just too much for the beam. And if, if cot theta is less than one, you have to go back to the drawing board and design your beam again. Okay? If cot theta is such that, um, that this length here is greater than 2.5 Z, then it says just limit it to 2.5 Z. Simple as that. Right. Well, cot theta, the cot of 8.86, all of cot is, is 1 divided by the tangent of the angle, Art is, uh, comes out to 6.42. Well, that's way bigger than um, 1, so I'm OK. Yep, and now I have to think to myself, um, is that more than 2.5? Yes, it's more than 2.5, so I'm going to limit myself to 2.5z. Great. Here's the equation. That, uh, that I make use of. Uh, I say it's from Eurocode. I'm actually taking the, many of these equations directly from the iStruct D manual for the design of uh, con uh, reinforced concrete buildings, uh, which is a great little book. Uh, let's see. So the shear resistance of my beam uh, is defined by this equation here. It's the area of uh, steel. Here we go. It's the area of steel that's actually holding the concrete section together, and the way I find that 
is the spacing and the length of which the cracking may take place. So it's the area of steel times the strength times its design strength times z cot theta over s. Okay, so I can rearrange this as I know all the parts of this um, formula apart from s. I rearrange it to find s, which is the spacing between the links. That's the distance between any two links. Okay, so ASW, that's the cross sectional area of a pair of links, so the, uh, of a single link. So the cross sectional area of two 12 mil diameter bars, two 12 mil diameter bars is 226 millimeters squared. So ASW is 226. FYW, that's the design strength of the shear reinforcement. Well, it's 500 times the materials factor, which gets it to 0.87. Z cot theta, that's this, um, that's the distance that allows this cracking to take place. Uh, we're limiting it to 2.5 Z. So 2.5 times Z for us, here we are, 2.5 times Z, because we've got a Z of 524. I've moved the S, the spacing, across to the other side, and I've brought the VRDSY down to this side. Well, the VRDSY, that's our design shear strength. Because we've got such a shallow angle, uh, for the strutting action of the concrete, our VRDSY is exactly the same as our minimum VED min. So VED min, I've already calculated that earlier. Here it is, VED min, 199 kilonewtons. Let's plug that into the equation. So S, 226, blah, 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 divided by 199. I divided by 1,000 to get my units straight. Uh, the answer gives me 647 millimetres. Well, uh, I could use that, but I always use a rule of thumb that tells me that uh, uh, I never put the space in as more than three quarters of the effective depth. So 0.75D in this instance gives me 462 mil. So I'm going to be specifying two legs of H12 at 450 centers. Great. I have one more equation to check through before, um, before I finish, and that is to just check that the strength of the concrete uh, itself is sufficient. Here's the equation, 0.18 dB into 1 minus FCK over 250. FCK sine 2 theta, that gives me a value of 330 kilonewtons. That tells me I'm okay because the applied shear force is VED min, which is 199 kilonewtons. Great. That's uh, the rather rushed end of the, um, the video, so hope it made sense. If it didn't, I suggest you look through it again. So thanks for watching. Cheerio.